Titanic was unsinkable, that's what they claimed. But it didn't even take four days for that legendary cruise to sink to the bottom of the ocean. There are so many more such questions and mysteries that still leave investigators baffled. Power away, left and right together. Both sides together. Steady. 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 And today, I'm going to tell you about the 15 mysteries of the Titanic that can never be explained. Let's get started. Did the Titanic actually break in half? Most survivors of the Titanic disaster have always stated that the ship split in half after it struck the iceberg on April 14, 1912. For a long time, the survivors' claims were dismissed. However, in 1985, when they finally found her wreckage in two pieces, it was confirmed that the ship had indeed split in half. But then again, there have been doubts about whether it broke after sinking or it happened in front of everyone's eyes. If you read any articles about the Titanic before 1985, you'll see how none of them mentioned the splitting in two. In an article published in 2003, Bill Wormstedt wrote that only four of the total survivors stated that the ship sank in pieces, while the other 13 had insisted that it split in two. But here's the weird part. One of the survivors was Thomas Dillon, who in several interviews confirmed the breakup but he said a totally different thing when it came to testifying before Lord Mersey. Another survivor who did the same thing was Major Poishan, who told reporters about seeing her break apart. But well, he also changed the story during the hearings. But this doesn't even end here. Another very detailed account comes from John Snyder, who said that he saw the Titanic torn asunder. But boom, his letter to a friend is revealed and guess what he wrote in it? He stated, if she parted in the middle, I did not see, and I was watching closely. Mind you, most of his other accounts were true, but this one only added to the suspicion. Then there was one person who actually said that he saw it break apart, and that's Dr. Washington Dodge. But even his more detailed explanation of that night has no mention of the Titanic splitting in two pieces. It's still not confirmed why these people kept changing their statements, but now, since everyone believes that the Titanic broke apart, another question arises. How? How and why exactly did that massive ship break into two pieces before sinking? Most theories and accounts from the survivors state that it was the ship's boiler that had an explosion. As a result, it tore apart. The tip went down first, while the stern straightened up before saying its final goodbyes. Many believe that a third party didn't want the world to know that the Titanic had some technical issues as well. Because if it wasn't for an issue inside of it, there wouldn't have been an explosion, and no tearing apart either. But once again, it's up to your imagination to think of a reasonable answer to this mystery. Why did SS Californian not help? It's that idiot on the Californian. Tell him to sod off. I'll do more than that. Today, the SS Californian is known as the ship who watched Titanic sink. In fact, it remains a mystery why exactly the ship never approached to provide help. Captain Stanley Lord was the one operating the SS Californian that night. However, his actions were weirdly alarming. And after that night, his life wasn't the same anymore. He was called in for inquiries by both the Americans and the British inquirers. And his actions were said to be not only unprofessional, but also negligible. According to the records, Lord had actually sailed towards the Titanic, but the route he chose caused the issue. Apparently, instead of taking the straight, shorter path, he opted for a more twisted and longer route. However, during the hearings, he stated that it was toward Titanic's last broadcasted position. There were many discrepancies in his statements, which was another reason why he was deemed unprofessional. Even though he wasn't really formally charged, these inquiries and the public opinion simply ruined his entire career. He lost his job, and it's said that his personal life also shattered in this chaos. But here's the weird part. A little time after the Titanic sank, the SS California also vanished. The situation was ironic and sad at the same time. Apparently, during World War I, 
the ship sank in the ocean and was never found. Ironic, right? What happened to Titanic's captain? Captain Edward Smith, who led the Titanic to its first and last journey, became part of a mystery that'll never be solved. No one among the survivors could give a proper account of what happened to the captain. However, the last time everyone actually saw him was when he appeared on the bridge of the ship, asking what she had struck with. First, Officer William Murdoch replied to him saying, an iceberg, sir. And then, not one person was able to tell what went on with Smith. He had spent over four decades in the sea and was almost never involved in an accident. But now, he was stuck in one of the most disastrous moments to have ever happened. His body was never recovered, and conflicting accounts made his final moments a mystery. Titanic fireman Harry Senior, who was one of the survivors, stated that Smith jumped off the ship with a baby in his arms. He then reached a lifeboat, handed off the child, and went back to the ship saying, I will follow the ship. But this account was never confirmed, and some stated that he actually made it to a lifeboat, however, when one of the funnels broke loose and crashed in the water, he lost his grip over it. While most people said that he had died when disaster struck, others believed that he never died at all. In fact, just three months after the Titanic drowned, a Baltimore businessman, Peter Pryle, claimed that he saw Captain Smith in the city. The problem is, Pryor was no random person, but instead a highly regarded local businessman who claimed to have known Smith before the Titanic disaster happened. He claimed to have seen Smith twice, and once he even approached him and asked how he was, to which Smith supposedly replied, Very well, Pryor, but please don't detain me. I am on business. He even said that he followed Smith to a train station where he boarded a train to Washington. Another thing that adds to the suspicion was the fact that in 1940, the Life magazine suggested that the captain had been in Ohio for years and died of old age there. It was said that this man was known as Silent Smith because he'd only give his name as Smith, was about the same age as Captain Smith, and even had similar tattoos. But once again, it turned out to be a lie, and it was confirmed that the man that Life had referred to was actually Michael McKenna and not Captain Smith. Even today, many wonder what really happened to him. Did he really drown? Or he killed himself? Or maybe he made it out alive and spent the rest of his life in secrecy? Guess we'll never know. The last song on the Titanic. Most people must know the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee, as the final song that the band continued to play while the ship was drowning. But what if I tell you that there have been conflicting accounts about this too? Vera Dick, who was one of the survivors and was traveling as a first-class Canadian passenger on Titanic, said that the hymn was actually the final song that played. But here's where things get interesting. The time that Vera states when she got onto a life raft doesn't match with the time when musicians started playing music. It was about an hour and 20 minutes before the musicians began playing the final melody. Many even doubt that something like this ever happened. While the world still believes that the musicians stayed behind, many people think it was just a made-up story. To top that off, the conflicting information about the final song makes it even more difficult to believe what happened. And with all this, it's safe to say that the final melody, if it was real, was probably not nearer my God, thee, and will remain a mystery. Was it Titanic or some other ship posed as Titanic? You might call me crazy, but even I believe this theory. The Titanic was the one that sank, right? But did you know there was a twin of this legendary ship as well? And many believe that this twin was the one that went down in the ocean that night. Yeah, it might sound bonkers, but let me explain. A ship sank, and we all know it really did happen. But are any of us really sure that it was the Titanic? A theory suggests that it wasn't Titanic that was the company's technical marvel, but instead, the company swapped the ship with an older, yet similar-looking ship, the Olympic. But why does this theory even exist? Well, at that time, there was a big competition between the British White Star Line and other companies. 
In fact, it had a very special rivalry against the Cunard Steamship Company, which in 1906 and 1907 sent a maiden voyage, the Lusitania and the Mauritania. Now, in order to compete against these ships, White Star Line introduced its Big Four, but it failed to stand against Cunard's superfast ships. In 1902, the company, after getting J.P. Morgan's permission, started building what were later known as Olympic-class ships, and three ships were commissioned – the Olympic, the Titanic, and the Britannic. The first one to be built was the Olympic, and it was the lead ship as well. When launched into the sea, its first voyages were a success, but on its fifth voyage, tragedy struck. In 1911, it got into an accident when it crashed into a passing military vessel and barely managed to get back to the port. Now, here's where the conspiracy begins. Conspiracy theorists believe that after the crash, the Olympic caused major economic loss to the company. It was not getting repaired because insurance didn't cover the damages anymore and it was just there existing for no reason. And that's why the company switched the Titanic with the Olympic. Since the ship was damaged, it was bound to go down. So they thought, why not just make money off of it? You know how insurance scams work, right? But the only thing that ruined the plan was the iceberg. What do you think? Was it really not the Titanic? Why were there no lifeboats for everyone? Many people wonder about why there were no lifeboats for everyone aboard. After all, the Titanic wasn't some ordinary ship and it had over 2200 people on board. Shouldn't the ship have had lifeboats that could hold all these people? Well, there's some explanation to it. Apparently, the Titanic had more lifeboats than required by British law at that time. According to the Merchant Shipping Act 1894, every ship weighing over 10,000 tons must have at least 16 lifeboats that could accommodate up to 990 people. But here's the problem. The law didn't state anything for ships bigger than that, which could accommodate a lot more than 990 people. The Titanic weighed over 45,000 tons. Despite being so massive, it only required 16 lifeboats. However, it had 20 of them. But that still doesn't make sense, because 20 lifeboats were nowhere near enough to hold all the people on the ship. And many think the reason why it was so was because everyone believed that the Titanic itself was supposed to be the lifeboat. After all, she was built in such a way that it could stay afloat even after sustaining damage. But well, so many questions were left unanswered because many of those who claimed for it to stay afloat also drowned with her. What was the rush? There were many reasons behind the Titanic meeting her end, but going at a super high speed was one of the biggest issues. And even today, it's a mystery why exactly the captain did not listen to the warnings. From the very start of the voyage, Captain Smith was sailing the massive ship at a very high speed. According to the reports, the ship was traveling at a speed of 22 knots. Throughout the journey, they received six warnings of sea ice, yet still no change was made to the speed. And when the iceberg appeared, they didn't have enough time to turn away from it. Because of this, the ship crashed with the iceberg and the starboard side suffered from it. Not only that, this blow also opened six of the 16 compartments to the sea. Many believe that the captain was trying to better the crossing time of her sister ship, the Olympic. But another theory states that one of the coal bunkers had caught fire and they were trying to control it. Whatever that was, the actual reason is still unknown. Why were the warnings ignored? It has been confirmed on many occasions that Captain Smith received multiple warnings, but it's still a mystery why he dismissed all of them. Almost an hour before the ship crashed with the iceberg, the Californian had radioed warnings about seeing dense field ice. One account states that the warning didn't have the prefix MSG in it for the captain to take it really seriously and react to it. In fact, because there was no such prefix, the radio operator Jack Phillips considered it a non-urgent one and didn't pass it along. Because normally ice warnings were just warnings from other ships that they saw some ice at a certain location. But the question remains, did they really get a warning about an iceberg or just ice in the water? 
that's something that might never be answered. However, a recent revelation does state that Edward Smith was handed a note warning him about a mast from a submerged wreck standing perpendicular in the Atlantic. Apparently, the note also mentioned the height of it, which was about 10 feet. And if that was the case, then it's actually weird to know that Smith decided not to lower the speed after getting the warning. Why were there no binoculars? It is believed widely that the Titanic wouldn't have gotten into the tragic accident if only there were binoculars aboard. But why were there no binoculars? Isn't that one of the mandatory items on a ship? I mean, how were the lookouts supposed to keep an eye on what was coming in the ship's way? Well, some reports suggest that there were actually binoculars on the ship, but they were locked in a room and no one on the ship had the keys. Apparently, there was a change in the crew right before the ship set sail. The sailor named David Blair was removed from the Titanic and another person took his place. Now, the most popular accounts suggest that Blair had the keys to that locker room in his pocket and he actually forgot to hand them over to the new sailor in charge of things. Most people, however, do not believe this and it's been stated several times that the binoculars were never on the ship. In fact, they were removed from the Titanic for some unknown reasons. Where did the Chinese survivors go? Among the 706 survivors were six Chinese passengers as well, who faced a pretty weird situation when rescued. There were a total of eight Chinese passengers on Titanic, however, only six of them survived. Their names were Li Bing, Ling He, Chang Chip, Chang Fu, Fang Lang, and Ah Lam. Reports suggest that all six of them were sailors who were traveling to the Caribbean for work. When the ship sank, Fang Lang was found clutching onto a floating wooden door. It's also said that this was what inspired that famous scene in the 1997 movie where Rose survived by lying on a floating door. Anyways, back to the topic. After they were rescued, these Chinese passengers, like any other, arrived at Ellis Island. However, the immigration inspection team turned them away immediately because of the Chinese Exclusion Act. The group was transferred to a Cuba-bound ship, and guess what? The group simply vanished. A documentary team even tried to track down these men, but none of them were found. Many believe that these six men were first transferred to the UK, and from there they scattered and moved to countries like India, Canada, and to the US. However, the details are still not 100% legit. In fact, even some family members of these men had no idea whether they survived or not. John Jacob Astor knew something. Among the people on Titanic was Jacob Astor, who at that time had a personal fortune of over $150 million. He was, in fact, the wealthiest man aboard. When the disaster struck, he, along with his wife and servants, were also looking to be rescued. But something weird happened. He managed to put his wife on a lifeboat but was refused since it was only for women and children first. However, many accounts suggest that he had a chance to get on another lifeboat, but at that time, he refused to board it. The reasons? That remains a mystery. No one understood why he didn't want to be on the lifeboat, even though there was space for him. He drowned and passed away while his body was recovered about a week later. He rests in the Trinity Cemetery in New York. Was it really a supermoon that caused the disaster? Many scientists blame the supermoon for the Titanic tragedy. This theory states that it was a once-in-many-lifetime lunar Earth alignment that probably put that massive iceberg in the ship's path. According to Olsen's team of forensic astronomers, this supermoon raised ocean tides so much that the large iceberg drifted into the path of the Titanic. They state that the iceberg actually moved from the south of the Newfoundland and Labrador coasts because that's where most similar icebergs are normally found in the shallow waters. According to the study, it was unusual for an iceberg to have been present where the accident happened. These researchers believe that on January 4th, 1912, the moon was closest to Earth as it had been in 1400 years. 
This started the whole phenomenon, and the iceberg traveled from Greenland to the Titanic's route. Even though it's just a theory, it could actually explain why Captain Smith wasn't really alarmed by the warnings. More like he had no idea something like this could be present on the route they were on. Yet still, there's no solid answer to this question either. Did Jenny predict the ship's future? Along with humans, many animals were also aboard the Titanic. And one of these animals was Jenny the Titanic cat. She was a ship cat and roamed around the Titanic all day. But this also meant she had no owner and no one smuggled into a lifeboat when the Titanic was sinking. She was presumed dead. However, there are some rumors attached to her. Stewardess Violet Jessup, who was one of the survivors, stated that the cat had given birth to a litter in early April before the voyage began. She kept her litter in a cozy corner of the ship where an Irish stoker took care of them. But at some point before the Titanic was launched into the sea, Jenny removed her kittens from the ship. Apparently, the Irish stoker saw Jenny move her kittens off the ship one by one and left them on dry land. He took it as a bad omen and didn't board the ship either. And just a few days later, Jenny's instincts were proven right. If this story is true, Jenny actually saved not only her kittens, but also saved the life of the man who cared for them. Even though the story was never confirmed, many think that the possibly psychic ship cat actually knew what was coming, and by moving her kittens from the ship, she was probably warning everyone about the ill fate of the Titanic. Did J.P. Morgan really plan this whole thing? All right, this one is a little too much, but trust me when I say many out there actually believe it. At that time, J.P. Morgan was one of the wealthiest people in the world, and he was also one of the owners of the Titanic. What makes people believe that he planned this whole thing out was the fact that neither Morgan nor any of his family members boarded the ship. Even though they were actually supposed to be there, all of them cancelled at the last minute. Many say it was because Morgan planned it out, and he, for obvious reasons, didn't want himself or his loved ones on that ship. But was it really the case? Because many theories also deny this assumption. Was it an insurance scam or a murder plot? The most widely accepted conspiracy theory is that the sinking of the Titanic was a massive insurance scam. But then there are people who believe that it was, in fact, a murder plot. And who was behind it? Morgan. Apparently, the theory states that Morgan wanted to kill his enemies, including Jacob Astor, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Isidore Strauss, all of whom died in that tragedy. But the question is, if it was a murder plot, he must have planned it for a long time. And why couldn't he just deal with those three people? What was the motive behind sinking a whole ship, killing over 1,500 people? And these were the 15 mysteries about the Titanic that'll never be solved. What do you think about it all? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next one.